Welcome again, everyone, to the Yalak Emmet channel on Twitter, YouTube, Patreon. It is June 15, 2022. This is another lesson in my Will of God uh, lessons titled uh, Directed Will. This is part five, focusing on the word designed. And this is another lesson in the Yalak Study Notes Torah Commentary, the Commentary of the Lord God. And so, focusing on the word designed, my thought here is that destiny has been designed. So this is looking at the design of destiny. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, Then shall the dust return to the earth, as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Notice here, being consistent with the other four lessons so far dealing with directed will, or the will of God, that the writer here is showing that even after death happens, you are still being directed because it says the dust of your flesh basically will return to the earth. Someone is directing that. Who would it be but the creator who made man from the dust of the ground in Genesis chapter 1 and 2? So he's directing the flesh back to and the spirit is returning unto God. So that's directing the spirit to return back unto God. So even in death, you do not have control. Obviously, if you're dead, you don't have control. So someone is directing your life while you are living, and someone is directing your what's left of you after you die. In fact, the direction of God or the word of God was what directed you into existence or pointed you toward existence because he formed man of the dust of the ground and then sent his spirit into the man. And he is directing both body and spirit again after you die. You do not have control, ultimate control in this life. The creator does. So even after death, you are directed as to where you will go. You are still under God's will, even after you die. Now, lesson four, I was paying attention to inner sensations because, like the Bible says, he has placed the world in our hearts. If you run back to Proverbs 16, verse 1, that I read in lesson one and two of directed will, it says here in Proverbs 16 and verse 1, the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So again, the way you live your life that is prepared in the heart by the Lord and the answer of the tongue. That's why you feel so guilty when you say and do things and live in ways that you know are wrong. You don't feel good about it. And some people who do stuff to you, some of them will feel bad, and some are just callous. But in general, when we both, that both people, the one who the stuff is is being done to, and the one who does stuff and so on, we when we don't live by what has been prepared in the heart of man, life gets rocky, troublesome, problems in life and so on. That's why the world is the way it is, because the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord, but man has chosen to live otherwise, so we get chaos and upset. Like the Bible also says, God made man upright, but he has made or sought out many inventions. So he tried to do many things that were not according to the preparations of the heart the way that God prepared the heart to be. So if he's forming man from the dust of the ground and putting his spirit in him, that's it. He's putting his spirit in the man that he formed 
to prepare the heart and the tongue to live and move through this life the way he wants the man to live and move through this life. That's why he put his spirit in him. Because you can't get through this life without the spirit of the Most High. So he blew breath into the man or God went inside the man. So when they tell you in Christianity you need to follow the book of Acts outpouring from the day of Pentecost and cloven tongues of fire and so on, sat in the heads and started speaking in tongues, telling you to get the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues like they told me when I was a child. And I went through all of that. That's kind of dumb and makes the New Testament fake again because you already got the spirit because he blew breath, his ruah, his spirit inside the man. The man, man already got the spirit from the very start. Because they taught us the Holy Ghost will make you live right, tarry for the Holy Ghost. But he already put his spirit in man so that the preparations could happen in the heart of man to live the way that God wanted. So when they're teaching you that stuff in New Testament to get Holy Ghost and so on in Christianity, it is rubbish. Now, is God sovereign? That's an interesting question that people should consider when they are trying to get their lives back on track. If you've gone astray and, you know, who hasn't gone astray in their life? Jeremiah 27, verse 11 to 12, and then verse 22. But the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, those will I let remain still in their own land, saith the Lord, and they shall till it and dwell therein. So they're only going to be able to remain in their land and even till it and get food to eat and so on. If they bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon this is what God is saying that they should do so if they go along with this plan that he has prepared in their hearts that they should bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon then he will cause them to remain and continue living in their own land see because directed will is running the show God is sovereign and so even in a time of captivity being conquered and so on you are going to live in that conquered state and so on if God chooses to let you live or you will die because the invading people will kill you God chooses that and the Bible says it is the Lord that bringeth down to the grave so he chooses who will live and die at what time God is sovereign that's why they always sang when we were a child in Jamaica God is in control. God is in control. Verse 12, I spake also to Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon, and serve him and his people, and live. See that? Because God had already spoken it, so he's pleading, come on, just bring your neck there. So you bring it to show that you are accepting the preparations in the heart of men and the answer of the tongue. So here he is again, his tongue is speaking the words of the Most High to Zedekiah, king of Judah, so that the man and the people can have a chance to live. And then he says in verse 13, because why will ye die and thy people by the sword and famine and pestilence and so on? Why? Because if you do not go according to the preparations of the heart and the words spoken by the Most High, the word of the tongue that has commanded this thing from the sovereign rule of God, you are going to die, the people are going to die, or get pestilence and so on, and famine they're going to experience and things like that. God runs the show. His will is at the top. Verse 22, they shall be carried to Babylon, and there shall they be until the day that I visit them. Until, saith the Lord, then will I bring them up and restore them to this place. See, they cannot get out and be restored and come up and be restored to this place if God does not will it so he wills it but he's like after a certain time after your punishment because God runs the show so even the destiny has been designed to include them going through all of that but returning to the land but if they go through it the way God is saying go through it and take this punishment then he will restore them and bring them up and restore them to this place it said because God runs the show. 
destiny is designed to bring you to the place you need to be. Even if you got to go through some trouble and upset and so on. Go through it by seeking the word of the Lord for your life and by following what you know is good common sense that is based on wisdom and understanding and learning. Or you're going to have massive trouble more than you want to deal with. Isaiah 45 verse 7, I form the light and create darkness. Just like we just read there, Jeremiah saying to Zedekiah, it's like, basically, it's the Lord that's forming the captivity and saying, bring your neck under this yoke of the king of Babylon. He formed that and then he, he created the deliverance and say, I will bring you back up to this place. After you, you have gone through that stuff and brought your neck under that yoke. I will create the peace and so on and the restoration. So I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. I, the Lord, do all these things. Imagine that. God makes man out of clay like you make some clay, clay man playing a game and so on as a child. You make the clay man the way you want him to make. You make him as big as you want him and... Put some buttons on him and whatever, make it look like he's got buttons, put some eyes or whatever. You form him and then you make him move the way you want to with your hands and so on. Everything that he encounters in your little game, playing with the other clay, clay people and with some toy cars around him and so on, that you let him sit in. Everything he does and encounters, you are doing it because you are the creator of that little clay man. Now, God forms man from the dust of the ground, just like he says here, I form the light and create darkness and so on. So everything that man experiences is God doing it. Man's not created, and then the spirit goes in him from the creator, and then somebody else is responsible for all the, the darkness and the evil and so on that, that the man experiences in this life. No, God forms and creates everything that the man experiences. This is God's world, the creator set up this world and whatever we experience in it he designed it all he set it all up and different variables might interact with each other and so on but it's still his whole setup this whole world is god's setup he creates even evil i the lord do all these things so if the man is created and then He's going up on a hill to look around to see what this earth is all about. Climbs up on a tree and he falls down. Or the man, a couple thousand years later, gets in a car and gets in an accident. I, the Lord, do all these things because those things are evil happening, something bad happening. I create the possibility of you falling off that tree as Adam in Eden. Or of you, thousands of years later, getting in a car accident. I create the evil that you could experience out of all of that because i the lord do all these things just like if you put the clay man to stand up while you're working on another man and then while you're making the next man the next clay man the first one that you put to stand up he fell down you created him and put him there and he fell down if you didn't want it to fall down you could have made him with much bigger feet so it's more difficult to fall with much bigger feet and more weight down and surrounding his feet, or simply put him to sit in the toy car, he could not fall down like that. But you were doing it all. You created the possibility that this thing could fall down when you left it alone. It all points back to you. It's the same with the Creator. So God is sovereign. He rules everything. He runs the show. So when you see people talking about what they're doing with the weather and everything else and the evil that they're doing, people are trying everything. And like I said, different variables might interact with each other and whatever. Just like when you mix, God made the colors, but then when you mix a, mix a couple of colors, they might come up with another kind of color and so on. That's not normally there. It's still God that did that, that made it possible that the colors could blend together and come out looking a different way. Well, when people are saying this and that to you, sabotaging your plans and doing all kinds of things against you and so on, and then with the clouds that they do and everything, 
people are able to mix and match things together, jumble up stuff, but it's still the Lord that's running the whole show. He's making the everything that you see up in the sky above. So no matter what is prayed up there and some, it's God who makes it to rain. But people can interfere and try to get something done. The same way you can put a lot of water in your mouth and then make it do a mini rain on some ants and bugs that's underground when you and spray out the water. And as far as the ants and the other bugs on the ground are concerned, they do not know you are God. They think it's just God or whatever they think. All they know, it is just rain coming down. But it's not God making it come down at that time. So you can interact with the world and and so on, and the, the elements that are there by putting in some extra water in your mouth and using the breath in you and so on. So the breath element, the air element, and the water element, you can put them all in your mouth and, and from your lungs spray out and, and make what looks like rain coming down. But it's God who makes rain. It's God who makes the weather. It's God who made the elements. So the ants will get wet and so on. So when you see a man doing all kinds of crazy stuff in your life and spraying stuff on you and whatever, or in your personal life, elbowing you and sabotaging you, tricking you and hiding things from you and trying to damage your life, trying to damage your marriage, trying to damage your progress, trying to damage your job, trying to damage your money, all kinds of things they are doing. They're taking your children. They're doing all kinds of craziness. It's just like somebody spraying out the water from their mouth. On the, on the ants and so on on the ground and the ants don't know what's going on sometimes you don't know why this is happening you can't tell that somebody's sabotaging your life and doing this that and the other to you because you're like the ant not knowing everything that's happening in your world but it is God who is still running the world and when it is time for that to come to an end it will have to come to an end because when God is ready to do the next designed destiny move in your life nobody spraying water on you can make you get wet because god's going to stop it because he set the world so that the man has to get up and go to work and can't stay there spraying the water off out of his mouth anymore on the ants he has to get up now and go to work or run inside the house and check on the child and so on you see he can't stay there all the time so man can do stuff in your life as much as they please until God says you cannot please yourself by doing that evil anymore because the evil you are doing I created the potential of that I created that potential in this happen in this life to happen and anyone can use the evil potential I already created and they can use it to do stuff to other people but only so far as I allow when I say stop the evil you better stop that or I'm going to come after you and deal with you. So when people are doing stuff to you, hold tight to your God. Be still and know that I am God because it must come to an end. Because the Bible says, the same Bible says, if a man's, man's ways please the Lord, he will make even his enemies to be at peace with him. People can only do so much to you. If you want to have a, a, a somehow um, kind of um, interference in what people are doing, please the Lord. And let the Lord handle it because he will make even your enemies be at peace with you or he will just simply get them out of the way. Because God is sovereign and he runs the show and when it's time for your destiny to move and shift you in another kind of way, it's just going to have to stop when God says it. This is Directed Will Part 5 titled Design dealing with the design of destiny on the Yalak Emma channel, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon. This is the Yalak Study Notes Torah Commentary, the commentary of the Lord God. Now let's run to Ezekiel 38, verse 4. We'll read a couple of verses from this here. Verse 4. And I will turn thee back. See that again, God is going to do the turning back. And this is Ezekiel 38 here with the whole... Gog, Magog stuff. Right? I will turn thee back. So it's not the people deciding that they are going to come now and come after the people of God. It is God who is setting up the war. It is God who has raised up this Gog of Magog. It is God who is gathering the people together to fight and so on. I will turn thee back. I am God. I am sovereign. And just to make sure, if you feel, man, it looks like the Bible is coming true, and I know we are Magog, and we don't want any more of this God, because he rescued his people. He clearly is alive. 
he clearly is a real God, like our forefathers told us to come after these people. But one day, their God is going to come back. Now we can see it. We better stop our foolishness with these people because this God will destroy us. We're not going to go after them anymore. They've been rescued by their God. They're getting corn and wine. Let's leave them alone. No, you cannot choose to just leave them alone because I will turn thee back. And to make sure you go there, I will put even hooks into thy jaws and I will bring thee forth. You don't have a choice in this. I'm going to put hooks in your mouth like somebody catching fish with hooks and I will bring thee forth and you're going to have to come because I got hooks drawing in your jaw pulling you and all thine army horses and horsemen and doesn't the Bible say the shoes of the earth belong to the Lord so all these weapons really belong to the Lord I'm going to put hooks in you and bring you forth with all your army and, and horses and horsemen and so on that I gave to you any way to fight wars and horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. But didn't we just read Isaiah 45, 7, that the Lord creates good, creates evil and so on. You see, and he created this army with the weapons and even their clothing and so on. All sorts of armors he gave to them. God does this. He is sovereign. He is in control. And so he's going to destroy these people to make sure his people are not bothered by them anymore ever again. Because it is part of the design of destiny. You can't have the destiny that was desired for you if God does not destroy your enemies. Leave that person messing with your life. Stay far from them because one day God's going to destroy them out of your life. Destroy the power that they have. Because God is sovereign and he rules in the affairs of his people. Now, verse 7 and then 9 to 10. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. So be prepared because this is something I'm doing. So you better get ready because I'm doing it. Get yourself ready. Verse 9 to 10. Thou shalt ascend and come. So he told him to get ready to be prepared because he's going to give them a command now because God runs the show. His will is sovereign. What he wants gets done. They can't decide. We've got a butt kicking already and uh, lots and lots of millions of us died already just trying to get to this point. And it wasn't worth it because too many of us died. No, we're not going to do this. No, God says, no, get yourself ready because I'm going to finish you off. And thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. So again, God is going to create a storm in the life of the Israelites who were delivered. They were delivered, yet he's going to create another storm in their life that they have to walk through and deal with. Because God creates the evil, he creates the light, he creates the darkness, he creates everything. Now he's creating another storm for the children of Israel who were delivered by his power. He's creating another storm. And thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall come to pass that at that same time, that at the same time shall things come into thy mind. Didn't I say from Proverbs 16 verse 1, the thoughts in the heart, the preparations in the heart and the answer in the tongue of man is from the Lord. So he's putting it in their heart here, in their mind to think this. It shall come to pass that at the same time that things shall come into thy mind because God Put it there in the mind. When people are coming against you, sabotaging you, doing stuff. God put it in their mind. Just rest in trust in the Most High. You can't understand it. You're asking God why, why, why. You can't figure out everything because my ways are not your ways. And my thoughts are not like your thoughts. But whatever his thoughts are like, whatever the world of God is like, it is different from the world you live in. So in his world, he does it different. But in your world, you'd be like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to stand for this. But God says, yeah, in my world, I will stand for this. Matter of fact, I'm going to create a storm. And you figure you just came out of one. But God says, I'm going to create another storm for you to walk through. And you're going to have to learn to lean on your God. It is the design of destiny. You don't know what it is to be in destiny until God makes it happen. Then you will understand just why all these things were necessary so you can find out in part the power of god that's why we sang this song in the christian church years ago when i was a boy it will be worth it all and at the time they're saying when we see jesus when we see his face something like that it will be worth it all 
and uh, I think there was another one. I can't remember, but basically the idea of that other song that I can't remember is something like, I think it was taken probably from Apostle Paul, something in the New Testament that says the same idea when we get there, we're going to understand it or something like that. But anyway, God's running the show here. Destiny, according to the scriptures, is making all these things happen because that is how destiny is created in God's world. In your world, you're building a chair. You would say, okay, you'd map it out. You look at some chairs. I want to build it like this, like that. Then you go, you get a piece of paper and you draw it out and you mark it out or you print out something from online. This is how to make the chair and you get the measurements. You get a tape measure. That's how your mind would work to, to fulfill that destiny, if I might use that, in making the chair. The destiny for these pieces of wood and whatever. You're going to become a chair in my house. And you mark out everything and then you, you figure you need some nails and you're going to drive the nails right here or some wood glue and so on. And then you choose even the type of glue that you will use and how long it's going to take to dry and so on. Then if you want to stain the chair, you stand it first and then you, you stain it and whatever you want to do to it, you put a little cushion on it. In your world, that's how you would, you would set up destiny. Step by step, step by step, that is well ordered and goes in a certain plan that actually creates the chair right and you don't give much attention to destroying it and giving much trouble but in god's world he will bring trouble sometimes in order to create the thing he's trying to make you see you see that trouble like somebody putting a piece of metal in the in the fire making it very hard to beat it out repeatedly to make a sword and they beat that thing beat that thing and try to get that that uh, piece of metal hot again until it starts to glow and they pull it out as if the as if the heat wasn't enough that's changing the color they start beating on it hammering it beating beating because that's how the best sword is made it's not like a child making it this is a professional making it well god is the biggest professional so that professional even seems too weak a world a word to describe him and his power and his knowledge of what to do. Destiny is being designed for you. You just got to trust the most High in order to walk through it. So it will come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought. So he's making the wicked think evil thoughts. People doing stuff to you in your life and they're telling lies on you and sabotaging you. God is making them think evil thoughts and say stuff to you. But it is that person's responsibility also to seek the Lord and to say, God, I don't like how I'm living. Then maybe God will change their heart and put new things into their mind so they can more live in a righteous way. But not everybody thinks like that. Not everybody thinks like that. You think if God puts in my heart to go like Leopold and chop off people's limbs and so on, or to go like some European and try to attack some, some black people and enslave them and for hundreds of years or so, that I'm going to just get up, hey, yeah, I'm glad to do this. No, I would say, God, please, why is this thought plaguing me? Where is this coming from? I would just be like, God, change my heart. Change. I would seek the Lord. Some people don't think like that. They're just like happy that this evil thought came in them. They rush to do it. They rush to do evil. That's a person who, so you see again, a part of the design of destiny. God is looking for people when he puts these stormy ideas and these evil ideas in their mind. He's looking for people who will gravitate to righteousness to say, let me lean on you. Let me trust you. Direct my heart. Let me live righteous and let me say righteous things and let me make righteous choices, not evil choices to go and do evil to somebody and enslave them. See, God is looking for people who will see the thoughts coming that don't seem well to them and will try to run from it. Like the Bible says, Job was a man that was righteous and he eschewed evil. He ran from it. But some people run towards it and are happy that God put the thought in their mind, even though they don't think God put it in their mind. They're just like, whoa. A wicked thought I can do to this person. I don't like them, so I'm just going to go in and do it. But the righteous might not like somebody, but they don't run to do evil to them. See, that's what God is looking for. To design the kind of destiny, to bring out the kind of destiny rather that he has designed in your life. He will put these things inside you. You must use the righteousness of the word and the wisdom and so on to not choose that path. Now, if God in the end is going to push you down there and make you do stuff, I guess he got no choice. But your first thought should not be, I'm going to carry this out. 
you should see the Lord to do righteousness. So destiny is going to take you all over the place into some tough situations where even God makes you look guilty. God will even set you up so you even look guilty. You don't read the Bible? You don't see the man after God's heart, David? Oh, God put it in his heart to kill people? Yeah. My David lessons that I did years ago, I think I took them down offline now. I did three of them year, years ago, maybe 2015, 2016 or whatever it was. Right? Man came and gave bad news to David. He, he killed them. Right? And, and, and he went fighting and killing, killing, killing people. Even when he was fighting, I think it was with the Philistines or whoever he was fighting with. And was, and was like, hey, you will see what I can do for you. Right? And at one point they didn't want to fight because they're like, hey, maybe you should stay out of this one. But, but, but he killed lots of people. And what did he say? He said it was God who put it in him to kill people because he said, the Lord taught my hands to war, my hands to fight. That means God was teaching the righteous man after his heart to kill people. God did that. So don't think it's strange when people are doing evil to you. God put it in them. But the difference was David was righteous and he would rather kill the wicked to protect his people Israel. And to do only as much as the Lord drove him to kill and drove him to do. Because whatever you do is evil. You better repent for that stuff because it's going to come back with some kind of repercussions. Even David at the end could not build a temple. God said, your hands have too much blood in it. You killed too many people. And you're like, but God, you told me to do this. Yeah, but you still went ahead and did it. It was necessary at the time to protect Israel, but still. And isn't that funny? Because the man after God's heart, his heart might have been fine, but the hands are too bloody to build the temple. The heart can desire the temple. Psalm 27, I want to dwell in your course all the time. So the heart is projected in his mind mentally inside the, 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 the inner recesses of the temple, but the hands are, the flesh is too bloody to go in there. You can't build this. I will let your son do it though. This is a funny God. You better watch the hell evil you're doing to other people because God will knock you up when it's time. You better watch how you treat other people. You better watch what you teach other people. You better watch how you deceive people. You better watch how you stand in other people's ways. Just like these heathen that are doing all this stuff to the world right now, their day is coming. The Bible says, they will tremble, the men tremble like women. And the women won't get the chance to tremble as much as that they will get ravished instead. You see that? Because God's going to deal with it all. So watch the evil you do and the, the wrong things you intentionally teach. If, if I'm going to teach somebody wrong stuff, I'd rather teach because I didn't know. And later when I find out, like, come back and say, this wasn't right, I figured it out now. Some people, they teach wrong things intentionally all the time for years they make all kinds of money from it and whoever they're serving by doing this they do all kinds of stuff but judgment it will happen you can see people grinning their teeth almost with a gold teeth that should be in their mouth because they've made all kinds of profit from whatever evil they're doing and teaching you but come on judgment will not miss them Verse 16. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days. He's even, see, God's will is so defined. He's even telling you, not only are you coming up, but it's even in the latter days. He's telling you, not the first time when they heard these things, but he's telling you it's going to be in the latter days. He's even got the time worked out already. And I will bring thee, so you're not going to get a chance to run away from this. I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes. See that? Look at this. 
that the heathen may know me. So your revelation of God as the righteous is to get the goodness of the Lord and to see the power of God work in your favor. But the revelation from God to the heathen is destruction. When they get destroyed, that's God's revelation to them. That's what God thinks of them, that his revelation is evil unto them. But when we get the revelation of God, it is salvation and sweetness in our bones. So God's going to give everybody some kind of revelation on this earth to know he is God. The righteous get it with sweetness and the wicked get the revelation as destruction in the form of judgment and destruction. So when you get that judgment, never say God never revealed himself to you. When you see missiles coming down like rain. It is the fruit of your doings. So this God's design to protect his people and finally cut off their enemies for good is laid out even in the scriptures in a way that shows that he has ultimate control, his sovereign directed will to bring the righteous into deliverance, into their destiny, but also to bring the wicked to their destruction. He says, I will bring thee in the land in the latter days. Now let's look at the will of God. Our God works in all things. He's always, even in the presence of the wicked and the righteous, because the eyes of the Lord are in all place, all over the earth, beholding the good and the evil. He's everywhere, even in the house of God, right? So when people gather you in some building to teach you stuff, God is there watching everything that they're teaching and watching the heart to see, reading from the heart to see what they're teaching you, if they're doing it deceptively, intentionally, and so on. Because the candle of man, the spirit of man, is the candle of the Lord. So he's watching and seeing all the things they teach you. Now Eli, 1 Samuel 2, 22, Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. I'll read to verse 25. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all these people. So people are talking about it a lot. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. Now, Eli should have just stopped them, cut them off from the start when they started doing that stuff. Because Israel is supposed to be so righteous. How did he let them continue so long? Because it sounds like they were doing this stuff for a long time. He should have cut them off to show how serious he was that they should stop this stuff, this behavior. But he continued it. So he got his own judgment as well. And they also. So Eli's sons did not hearken though, because God already decided to kill them. So they got a heart that would let them continue in the way and ignore judgment. Because it says here, they hearken not unto the voice of their father because the Lord would slay them. God did that. That the whole thing of Esau sought repentance but found it not. God made sure they did not hearken unto the voice of their father. So God prepares the preparation in the heart and the answer of the tongue so that Eli's tongue could speak unto them. But they would not because God hardened their hearts like he did with Pharaoh to make them not listen to their father because God wanted to kill them. Because if you go inside the temple doing that kind of stuff, God's just done with you from the start, it seems. So God says, I'm going to kill them. So he gave the voice to Eli to speak. So what they should have done was try extra hard to overcome this stuff in their heart. Then God would have probably seen that these people are really trying. They didn't. They just continued until the public started talking. So, 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 so. Like we say in Jamaica about what they're doing, but they still wouldn't stop. So God took them out. So you see that? People can't even repent 
if they want to. God decides who is going to repent and find repentance because it's God's will, designed will. If he designed it so that he would eventually slay them at a certain point, then they cannot reach repentance. God decides everything. The person who will not stop in your life, God has designed it to let them continue. God's going to deal with it. He's going to deal with them. The people who will not stop teaching you lies intentionally, God is going to deal with them. You just seek the Lord from your heart. Leave the rest to God. So God raised up one warrior, judge, king, prophet, and so on after another. Thus playing out the destiny of Israel that he planned from the start. It doesn't matter what goes on in between all the stuff you're reading in the scriptures. God's bringing his will to pass no matter what. Isaiah 14, verse 26 to 27. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all nations. For the Lord of hosts has purposed, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? Just like the Magog thing, they could not turn back. Because God says, I'm going to bring you there to the land against my people. With all your armies, your horsemen, and your clothing, and your armies, and everything. I'm going to bring you there. Who's going to turn back? This is a purpose that is purpose upon the whole earth. It's his will that's playing out on the whole earth. God started this creation, and he's going to continue it. This is God's will playing out everywhere around life. The wicked driving around you in fancy cars, living in fancy houses with their big investments and whatever. God set that up. That's how it works in God's world, in God's mind. But it's going to come to an end to bring out his will, his destiny for Israel. The purpose running on the whole earth is from the Lord. And it works in your life as well. So you've got to stop and rethink the different things that happened in your life. I jotted down for many years ago, I started doing this, probably from, probably a little over 20 years now, I got this folder that I made up, times, places, things, and I wrote down the time, place, and thing when certain key things happened in my life, so that I could reflect on them years later, and I'm glad I did, because now I can look back and see the trend, why certain things happen at certain times, what influences certain things that come into my life at certain times and so on, right? Because I was in search of wisdom and at the time I did not know I was in search of wisdom. Something just prompted me to do it because the preparations in the heart of man is from the Lord. And the day came when I wrote a book and I had to draw on those things that I wrote in order to put some things in my book. Everything is being done by God. It's by the Lord of the whole earth. Isaiah 51 verse 16. And I have put my words in thy mouth. See that? The preparations of the heart. Proverbs 16 1. And the answer in the heart of man or in the tongue of man. You see that? I put my words in thy mouth. And I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand. That I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth. And say unto Zion, thou art my people. God is running the whole show. He's doing everything. Everything that goes on, this is what God is doing. Isaiah 61, verse 10 and 11. I will greatly rejoice... In the Lord, my soul shall be joyful in my God. So even to rejoicing and singing the praises of the Most High, the answer in the tongue of man is from the Lord. So they can't rejoice if God didn't put rejoicing in their tongue. That's why when it was time for sadness, they couldn't rejoice. They said, oh, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and we wept. Remember the song that we sang from Psalm, I think Psalm 137 or wherever it is, right? And there we wept. We hung our harps on the willow trees. Why? Because God didn't put songs of joy and rejoicing in their mouth at that time. It was songs of sorrow. Words of sorrow. So, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. Even the clothes you wear. 
that is of salvation. It's God who put it on you like the clay man you made and you put the clothes on him or the doll you bought from the store and he put the clothes on the doll. He clothes the people with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. You can't do the righteousness on your own. It is from the heart where God has prepared the heart to live in righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. So you see part of the destiny that God is running now with the will of God is to deck you out like a bride adorned with jewels because when God is done, that's what he's doing. He's making his own bride with the directed will. He's creating in you the kind of, of bride that he wants Israel to be. God is fixing up his own bride. And you think I should go here and go there because I know how to do it. I know how to run my life. No, God says, you think you know, but I'm doing something that's different over here. I'm making the bride that I want. I will greatly rejoice in all this. Now, verse 11, for as the earth bringeth forth her bud, which again, God's will, God did that. And as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. He will cause it because it's his will. It's, 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 it's destiny that has been designed to bring forth righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations, before all nations, before all nations. Not no 666 taking over the world to make everybody be some kind of half human, half robot kind of stuff. That's not what's going to spring up all over the world. They might try this stuff, but righteousness and praise will spring up before all nations because God's going to get his people. Like Revelation says, these are those that escaped. So if you are Israel, like I taught already long ago, you are going to be one that escaped because you are the righteous and the judgment coming cannot be for you. You have gone through your judgment and you are at the tail end of it now. What's coming is for the wicked. Except that at the end, like we read in Ezekiel 38, he will bring them back as Magog, under Gog, to come after you again as a storm in the land. And then he's going to wipe them out. You see? Design of destiny. Everything has been designed and planned out to bring about God's will. So that righteousness and praise will spring forth before all the nations. And then the nations will come up to Jerusalem. Isaiah 2, 2 and 3. Right to come up to Jerusalem to learn of the ways to learn how to live on earth because with their wickedness and their evil and keeping us at the bottom, they have not yet learned one thing about how to live on the earth. They sell themselves to evil day in and day out and year after year. But the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth in the midst of the planting of 666 he's going to let the righteousness and praise spring forth in the midst of all the evil that they're doing it's going to spring forth all kinds of of missiles and nuclear bomb threats and whatever but in the middle of all those clouds and whatever mushroom clouds and whatever they're calling him still righteousness and praise will spring forth how can it spring forth because god is the god of life and the god of design and the god of destiny destiny has been designed to take you there as part of the plan of god to have the world he created and it will not fail because the lord he is god Isaiah 60, verse 21 and 22. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither that shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the, but they're saying they're blocking some. And the days of thy mourning shall be ended. And they say they're going to do this, that, and the other too, and wipe the smile off your face. Thy people also shall be all righteous, all of them. So when he just said he's causing righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations, it's you who's going to spring forth before all nations as a bright shining light so that the nations can see the righteousness and the glory of God. And a little one shall become, um, that I may be glorified, a little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time so god's doing this god's running the show psalm 1836 thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip again if he orders your steps as part of his destiny plan the will of god or directed will 
is enlarging your steps so that you do not fall off or out of his will. If he's got to enlarge it, make it so that it's pretty big, not like you're walking a tightrope. He's going to make it so that the righteous will walk in the will of God. God is running the show. Even your righteousness that you're living by, it's God that's doing it by enlarging your steps so that you can keep up with his path and stay on his path and keep his direction. Without him, you would go astray. Jeremiah 18, 1 to 10. Not going to read all of that, but we know the clay potter and so on. Let me just read maybe the first verse. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, verse 2, Arise, go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. All right. And um, verse 4, you can read maybe 1 to 10. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make. So Israel fell down. God made them a nation, but he's remaking it, right? You see that? See what's happening? To all the captivities and so on. Because you're not going to want to go astray again after this. He's remaking it. But here now he says, go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my words again. Proverbs 16.1. The preparations in the heart of man and the answer of the tongue. So, so the stuff is coming into you that you say is from God. He's causing you to hear that because he's causing you to hear and be directed by him. So, so God is choosing when you even get revelation and direction from him. So, so the clay potter, he decides usage, function, and the kind of vessel that's being created and so on. God decides the intensity and vibrancy of your response and reception to his revelation. You see, people who are teaching you lies and deception and doing all kinds of stuff, they've got a low level of reception to the revelation and voice of God. That's why they teach you lies. People who ignore truth when it's very clear. These people do not have great and vibrant a receptivity to the voice of God. But they might be in position. You understand that? They're in position, but they are not hearing well the voice of God. They don't drink from the fountain. They just drink the dregs. Genesis 50 and verse 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Didn't I tell you when those people are doing evil to you in your life? It's God that does it because he prepared it in their heart. I put the word in their mouth to speak evil to you. Just like when David said one time, leave Shimei alone because God has put it in him to curse me this day. And so Shimei continued to curse the king, David, curse him, curse him, curse him. And David, having the heart of God, understood what was happening and decided, I'll just leave him alone. I got to bear this. I got to go through this. God put it in this man's heart, Shimei, to curse me so he wouldn't touch him. But later on, he said to his son Solomon, I couldn't touch him because I knew God was setting him up to do this. But you bring his head down to the grave. Right? So, so God causes people to be a nuisance to you in your life. To hurt you, to wound you, to do all kinds of crazy madness to you. And you just want to make your fist and put their lights up. But God is looking for a response in you that is according to wisdom. Why are you going to put your face your fist in their face and go to prison or something like that and whatever and let them accuse you, lay some bigger charge on you and interrupt and interfere with your progress in this life. Sometimes you got to be careful. Not saying there's no time when you might not do something, but most times you should be able to hold yourself back. Most times. So here now Joseph is saying, look, you thought evil against me but why now that we have the other understanding now now that we have the other understanding of the scriptures the preparation of the heart of man and the answer of the tongue 
is from the Lord. So when the brother said, let's, let's, let's kill him. And then the other one said, see, that's coming from the preparation of the heart. They're, they're thinking that. And when the other one said, no, 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 let, let's, let, let's throw him down in the pit. And the other one said, yeah, yeah, let's sell him. You see, all that was from the Lord because they said, he said here, you thought evil against me. But obviously we know now that the thought came into their mind from the Lord and they could not stop themselves from thinking it and carrying it out. And so eventually he was sold, eventually ended up in prison, fleeing from, um, because of Potiphar's wife and so on. Joseph, I'm talking about. But, but, but he says, even though you thought all this evil to me and you were able to pull it off, God meant it unto good. So, so they thought the evil because God thought it and God meant goodness to come out of it. So God sent evil into Joseph's life to get him in position where he would eventually be elevated to being vizier in the land. Top person under the Pharaoh in a superpower, Egypt. So God took the man through all this meandering way of many different sleepless, restless nights of painful experiences and so on and being lied on and saying oh you know he's dead and whatever all kinds of stuff and accusations and heartless times of being cut off from family members like some of us are cut off from children from family from whatever right god put the man through all this stuff by preparing evil because i create light and darkness and i create evil and good and so on god created this stuff and used the brothers to get the stuff done who willingly went ahead with it and did not try to hold himself back fully if they were really righteous why didn't they say we cannot do any of this at all to our brother thankfully one spoke up or they would have just killed him but they couldn't kill him because God had meant it for good. So God played it out some other way by putting it into one of them to say, no, let's do it this other way instead. Let's just cast him down into the pit. But, but God meant it for good, the evil done. So, but Joseph did not know at the time that this was happening for good. But the good was delayed good because it is directed will. You got to go through a lot of different directions and go in a different direction, an opposite direction from where your father Israel would have taken you up. From where Israel was going, from the destiny that Israel had in plan, in mind, to raise up his children, his sons. But God had another direction according to his will, his destiny, his plan for Joseph's life, to say, I'm going to bring my will, and in order to get you the kind of stuff I've got planned for the destiny in your life, I have to rip you away from brothers, rip you away from family, rip you away from the food prepared on the table in your own house. I gotta rip you away from the guidance of your father so I can guide you myself. Some people can't fit in to the congregation and to the other, the group and the leaders, the group. And so you can't break in because maybe God is trying to direct you in another way and direct you in this life himself. Quit worrying and crying over what you've lost who don't want to receive you. God may just be directing you himself in a different direction. It is directed will. Part five, designed. Because destiny is designed by the Lord. So God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. God had a plan all along and the brothers didn't know it. The father didn't know it. Joseph did not know it. He just thought, my brothers, what? He's in shock. How could they do this to me? He just, just he probably just thought they're just jealous and whatever because of my nice coat and the father says nice things to me and whatever. He probably just put it on the level of jealousy maybe. But there was a secret plan that he knew nothing about. The father knew nothing about. The father didn't know it so much. The will of God and the plan, the destiny of God for his son's life that the father even cried, sorrowed. None of them knew that there was a secret destiny plan, a secret will. You cannot know right now just exactly the fullness of the secret will for your life. The secret destiny that God has for your life. Live in righteousness. Find wisdom. Get understanding and so on. Seek the most high from your heart, not man. Do not let people raise you up if God is not raising you up. And when God has raised you up, you can tell because your heart will be in full agreement locked into the plan of God 
And you know, some people, they feel, because see, they don't understand sometimes how the heart works because the heart is desperately wicked. That's why you got to give careful attention. Some people feel God raised me up and put me in this position. But you know how I know that they are misguided in those cases? Because when they finally read the scripture and see a certain verse that says something that challenges the way that they have gone or something that they did to get into that position, they ignore it. That's how you know they are not being led by God. Because they, they know what's wrong. They make no corrections. They do not go back and make corrections with the people that they, that they injured along the way to get there. They just praise God when they finally get there. But they resist the apology, the recommendation of their heart to go and make it right and to say, I was so wrong. I was so wrong. Something got the better of me. I was so wrong. They will not make any amends and corrections. That's how you know God did not put them there. They know it themselves, the wicked things that they do behind the scenes. And the people they've done the stuff to, they also know, but their voice don't get heard or respected that much. It's the kind of world we live in. But you just hang tight with your God. If you keep trusting in him, God's going to bring something out in your life. It is directed will. You will be directed by the Lord. So God decides who believes strongly in him who will respond to repentance and so on who will go and make corrections and who teaches truth and who will receive and utilize revelation god decides all of that even joseph did not know at the time because he did not get the revelation at the time neither did his father so the father said oh the blood and the coat he did not get the revelation that God was doing something, a destiny plan, in his directed will with his son Joseph. He did not know it. So he sorrowed and cried, broken hearted over the whole matter. Because God decides when and who will receive and utilize revelation. So Joseph got the revelation first before all of them. Because somehow during his time in the prison, he started to get the revelation, this is God. And when he was, was risen up before the Pharaoh, the revelation was as clear and bright as day. But you see, the revelation had timing with it. It took time for the revelation to come to him that God is doing this. Because even at a certain point, he was like, look, try to get me out of here. Remember, I said something good to you. Remember me when you go before the Pharaoh. But it wasn't time yet because God decides the timing when revelation will show up. And if you can utilize the revelation that comes as well. Some of these lessons I've taught, the revelation came to me years ago, but I was still in Christianity and didn't know what to do with it because it was not the environment where people could use it. I tried to break out and teach certain things, even though I was still wrong in many other understandings of the scripture and people cursed me over it. Because it was not the time, but now when I say it, people try to contact me wanting to learn more. You see? Because God decides when you will receive revelation and when it will be utilized. Because it is directed will. Because I put it in you now, don't mean it's for right now. Because I put it in you in that environment in Christianity, don't mean it's for right then and there in Christianity at that time. Because God decides who will see his light and when they will be able to shine out and reflect that light so joseph took some time before the revelation came to him and he still didn't use it he could have gone back the moment he understood and go searching back for his father and his family no he stayed put because he had learned wisdom to wait on the timing of god the same way the timing of revelation took a while to come he waited on the timing of god he knew god was doing this and he waited until god brought the brothers back to the one who was neglected, taken advantage of, abused and destroyed and sold into slavery. He said, God meant it unto good to bring to pass something, a designed destiny plan. Wait on the Lord, I'm telling you. Just like Psalm 27 says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait I say on the Lord. 
And that word wait is used many times in the book of Psalms. Wait, I say on the Lord. The man David who went through so many things, people coming after him to kill him, take his life and whatever. He said, wait on the Lord. He had to fight beer or lion or whatever, but he said, wait. He could have jumped the gun and just tried to dash out the right moment, the wrong moment rather. The bear could have destroyed him. The lion could have taken him out. But he was waiting for the time when the hands that God taught to fight was, was spirited to destroy the bear, the lion at the right moment. So he knew how to wait. Some of us can't wait. But David said, wait. You got the prompting, but wait on it. You got the gift, but wait on it. You got the talent, but wait on it. You got the stuff burning in your heart, but let it simmer. Wait. Wait till God raises you up. Wait till God moves you. Wait till he puts you in a different house. Wait till he moves you to a different city. Wait till he works it out for you. God says, wait. Wait in the presence of the Lord. Don't rush for that position all the time. Wait on the Lord. You might get trapped. Wait on the Lord. Somebody might buy you out. Wait on the Lord because somebody might frame you because you're trying to run ahead. Wait on the will. Wait on the destiny plan. God will work it out. Joseph could could Joseph could could interpret the the dreams because as soon as the opportunity came the opportunity came he was right there ready to do it immediately that means he was already skilled and practiced in it no doubt having looked at all the dreams that he had encountered all the other years before but he didn't run ahead he could have sent a message to the pharaoh tell him i know how to interpret dreams if he brings me up there and, and, and takes me out of this prison i can be his dream interpreter no he kept it silent kept it to himself not even the king knew about it but when destiny was ready to activate because God, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. When the time of destiny came up, when the revelation came and said that it is time to utilize the revelation that has been given to you, then he interpreted the dreams. Because timing is important with gifting and revelation. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait and he will strengthen your heart to do the waiting. Wait and he will strengthen your heart so that you can wait the time and not get bought in a contract that will trap you and destroy you and you can't get out of it. Wait. The gift is added at a certain point, but wait some more. The talent is, is grown up in you, but wait some more. The strategies are put in your life at different points, but wait some more until the strategy, the revelation, the talent and everything come together to form one full-bodied move of God in your life. Wait on the Lord. I'm telling you, it's better if you wait on the will of God, the directed will. When destiny is ready to activate something in your life at another stage. So you meant it for evil, but God meant it unto me for good. So, so, so Joseph, when he got the power and was wisdom, he could have gone back to take vengeance on his family or just to show off his flashy clothing and his nice money and gold and whatever. But he said, no, 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 because, because, because destiny is not for that raising you up is not for that that comes later on at the end where people will see the glory that the lord displays because he says i will cause righteousness and, and praise to spring up before all nations god wants to raise up joseph so that it is displayed before those who would come his brothers who would come and everybody else who came to Egypt to see what the Lord has done. Let God do it in your life and all the naysayers and all the wicked mouths that spoke against you. The Lord will direct you and raise you up until the glory of the Lord is shining out of you. Because a man's wisdom will make his face to shine. The direction of God in your life will make you shine forth and people will not be able to deny that God has been at work in her life. God God has been at work in his life. Let God run the show. It is called directed will. This is the design of destiny. Okay, so I've got two more verses. I'm going to leave those for another lesson because this has gone so long. All right, but um, again, this is part five. Directed will, the design of destiny. We're focused on the word design. Thanks again for listening to my lesson. And you can find more of my lessons again on the Alok Emmett channel, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon at this time. And you just heard another lesson on directed will in 
Maya Locke study notes Torah commentary, the commentary of the Lord God.